Netflix created this streaming space and is now the leader in paid streaming content. It is an incredible success story of a company here in the US. My name is Victor and I have an MBA, a lot of business experience, and I use that to analyze companies that I invest in. I'd like to share that analysis with you. In this video, I will be covering Netflix. Let me get into my review of Netflix. I take all the stocks that I invest in through a process. It involves four key questions followed by a decision whether I wanna buy more shares, hold or sell my shares. The first question, do I wanna be a part owner in this company? Do I understand the company? Can I make a good decision on the company? Do I want to be a part of the industry? Do I think it's a really good industry, one that's growing and going to be profitable for a long time? Is the company operating and performing well? So is the management team doing a good job? Is the balance sheet in good shape? Therefore, it has low debt, less than three times EBITDA. And I want to discount on the stock. I invest to make money and I want to get a discount so I can see my investment rise in value. Based on the answers to those questions, I decide whether I should buy, hold, or sell my stock. The story on Netflix is quite incredible. They used to mail us DVDs if you go way back when, and they decided or realized that, hey, streaming was the future. So they basically uh, bootstrapped the new business, spent all their capital on this new streaming business. So they should get a lot of credit that they really saw the future and built their business around the paradigm that would really be the future. So great props to Netflix. I understand what they do. I've been a, a customer of Netflix for a long time, but it's quite a simple uh, a model. They, they both license and create content that people want to watch. They charge a monthly fee, a subscription, and then they, they, in essence, grow globally. The industry, this is a new industry. It's part of media and entertainment, but the streaming side of it is fairly new. And Netflix is the leader. So I do want to be a part of this. I like businesses where you are licensing things or you're basically taking a product like a movie, showing it to a million people and charging each person to watch it. So really like the industry. I really like the company. Just a great group of people that innovated and created a great company. So Netflix is growing and their whole space is growing as well. So let me go over that. So first, Netflix, uh, two years ago, was was recorded as having 6% market share of the whole streaming market, and now they're at 8.2%. Uh, what's interesting is that if they measured how much you know streaming made up the overall viewership of, of people, and you can see that they had 26% where linear TV, broadcast TV, and cable were a majority, but that number continues to expand. So Netflix is getting bigger within the industry and the specific category of streaming is also expanding and exp it's expanding very fast, whereas cable and broadcast is collapsing very quickly as well. So Netflix is in the right space and they're growing. So that's really good to see. So I led by saying that Netflix is a big success story. It definitely is. If you look at their revenues, they pretty much doubled their revenues in the last four years. So great job, Netflix. You look at their business, the growth hasn't been as fast as it once was because they've become so darn big. And the law of big numbers, it's always hard to grow once you get big. But they continue to be profitable and more profitable quarter after quarter, year after year. So they're maturing which means growth isn't going to be as fast as it once was, but the profitability is really growing. So that's great to see. Now let's look at earnings per share and price earnings. So analysts expect earnings per share at 11.24 this year. I'm expecting it at 13. I'm going to go with 13. I think they're exceeding to some extent on earnings per share. Next year, they're expected that they're going to be at 14.6, which is good to see that earnings per share is growing. Their price earnings is high. They're the leader. They're the leader in a space that is pretty hot at 51.1. And I think that's a good PE for the market leader. I'm going to use a PE of 50 in my valuation. Their balance sheet, their debt is less than three times EBITDA. They have a good balance of cash. So the balance sheet is in good shape. Now let's look at the statement of cash flows. So they're Cash flows from operations for the first six months were $3.6 billion, which is great to see. They don't have to invest a whole lot in this business. Uh, purchases of property and equipment were only $162 million. 
their cash flows really grew. If you look at the first half of 2022 versus the first half of 2023, in fact, they grew 344%. They moved up from 814 million of free cash flow in the first half of 2022, and they moved up to $3.45 billion of free cash flow in the first half of 2023. Great increase. I value companies using the expected free cash flows of the future and discounting those free cash flows to today's value. I also use an earnings per share valuation and then blend those two valuations to get to what I believe the company is worth. Let me go over the free cash flow method first. Netflix guided that this year they're going to have about $5 billion or more of free cash flow. So that's a really good starting point. The company announced their earnings today and provided that figure. I'm going to grow those free cash flows as they're expected to grow at 8% and 5% after the that fourth year. In the future, all future cash flows are considered in the terminal value, meaning beyond year four, the terminal value of all cash flows going forward will be $220 billion. We discount those free cash flows that we expect in the future by 8% as a discount rate, or in other words, the weighted average cost of capital for this company. And we get to the value of those cash flows is $168 billion. I'm going to add the cash on the balance sheet and take away the debt to get to an equity value of $162 billion for Netflix. The market cap is higher. It's at $211 billion. So that puts the company using the cash flow method at a 22% premium. So the stock is overpriced by 22% or above the fair value. Now let's look at earnings per share. Earnings per share, my estimate is 13. I'm comfortable with that estimate. It's a pretty high PE, but they deserve it. They're the leader. They're growing really well. And as mentioned, the space is expanding and they are growing in that expanding space. So I'm comfortable with 50 but based on that, uh, those figures, we're going to do an earnings per share valuation method, and we come up with a value per share of $560, billion, uh, $560 per share. Their current stock price is $477. So using the earnings per share method provides a discount of 17%. Now, I weigh the free cash flow method more than the earnings per share method. In fact, I take two-thirds of this value, one-third of this value. And based on that combination, I get to a, a value that says that this, the current stock price is too high. It's being sold at a premium of 11% for Netflix. Year-to-date Netflix stock is up a lot. It's up 62%, which is incredible. Just a really great company. It's good to see their stock do well. But it may have hit a top. Uh, today, it went down 5% after the earnings were released. They released uh, their earnings after the market closed. So we'll see where it ends up in the next uh, couple of days and in the coming weeks. The performance of Netflix with regard to the stock price has just been awesome. 62% up. The growth, low growth with profits expanding. That's a very good combination. It's good to see Netflix really profit from their business. Their free cash flows, really good to see those expanding. And the balance sheet's in really good shape. They have low growth, and that's what I'm expecting for the remainder of 2023 with expanding profits and higher free cash flows. The stock price is high. That's one of the concerns that, hey, it's a great company, but it's run up. Uh, it's close to 62% this year, so maybe it's too high. And this, my long-term outlook, this is the leader in streaming, uh, in paid streaming. So they're going to command a premium, which I believe they deserve, a high PE. And they'll continue to expand their free cash flows because they're in a business where as they obtain more customers, you know, they just become more profitable and they create more free cash. So that's a really attractive feature of that company. I think internationally and domestically, they have room to grow the paid viewership. So they have plenty of addressable market to go after. And they have a new advertising tier where they advertise, you know, while they show you content. And I think that's a, a business that is fairly small, fairly new, but really growing fast. All right, now let's revisit my scorecard for Netflix. I think it's a terrific company and I want to be a part owner in an industry that continues to expand the paid streaming industry. 
The company is operated very well. Great job to the management team. Their balance sheet is in great shape. It's less than three times EBITDA and they have a good cash balance. But I'm not getting a discount offered to me on the stock. Therefore, I'm going to hold my shares in Netflix and wait either for the stock price to come down or wait an earnings release or two to see their fundamentals change. And if it increases the valuation enough, I may start buying shares. Or then on the flip side, if I see their fundamentals get worse, I may have to sell my shares. Hey, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it interesting. And please do me a favor, leave some comments on the video. It'd be great to hear from you and get your thoughts on Netflix. And all feedback is welcome. Please keep in mind, I'm not recommending you that you buy or sell Netflix stock. This is not investment advice. I record videos to share my experience and I hope you found it interesting and maybe learned a thing or two. Good luck investing in 2023.